Today I want to talk to you about something that many churches have to deal with and that's adding a worship service, which can be a very, very difficult thing, especially in a smaller church. So you're used to having everyone there at the same time, you're used to seeing everyone, and, uh, and so it's, it's really hard for a whole lot of people who say, well, how am I going to talk to everybody, how am I going to see everyone? And, uh, and so it's very, very hard to add a second service. Once you add a second service, adding a third service can be difficult, or a fourth service. And I know churches with seven services uh, who've figured out how to navigate the change. So what I'll give you today is some keys to thinking through that, that change. The first one, first question to ask yourself is why? Why are we adding a service? And there's really only two reasons to, to do that. One is, is capacity, that at your existing service or services, you're you're reaching what I call the 80% line, where 80% of the service is full, either in the children's area, in the parking space, or in the adult area. Those are the three factors that tend to push us toward adding an additional service. But there's also the other, other motivation, which is opportunity. By adding a service, we can actually reach a group of people we normally would not be able to reach. Um, Churches add a Saturday night service because they want to add people who work on Sunday morning or they may add another type of service because there's a certain group of people that like a different style of music or they, or they don't like music at all and they have a non-music service. Wh whatever it may be, um, you have to figure out how to, how to reach and how to take advantage of this opportunity. The next question you ask is, is when? When do we add a service? Uh, not just the season of the year. Typically, you want to add a service at a time that already has momentum. You don't want to add a service when you're going into summer. You don't want to add a service on the 4th of July weekend. You don't want to add a service the week after Christmas. You want to add it at times of momentum. So that's the seasonal answer to when. But there's also the question of do we add it to Sunday morning? Do we add it to Saturday night? Do we add it to Sunday night? Do we add it to Tuesday night? You know, when do we add this service? The first recommendation I would give you is to go online and look at the growing churches around you and see when they have services, what time their services are. Uh, some communities, Saturday services work great. In other communities, Saturday services just don't work. In some communities, Sunday evening services work and some they, they don't. You just need to to learn from those who are ahead of you. There's probably someone who has a larger church than you do that's experienced this already before. And so use your friendships, look on, the e, uh, look on the websites and just find out when services are. And then trust God, pray about with your leadership when you should add a service based on the wisdom you gain uh, from, from others. Uh, there are advantages to having, uh, having two Sunday morning services. I just want to mention this uh, first of all. Uh, when you add a service, when you have one service, you go to two services, it gives people the opportunity both to serve and to worship during the same, uh, the same time they have at church. They don't have to make two different trips to, to serve and to worship. Uh, adding a third service, uh, you may add one on Sunday morning, you may add on Saturday night. Um, uh, typically, Saturday night uh, in certain parts of the country is a fantastic time to, to do services because, again, there are people that can't come on Sunday morning. But you've got to figure out how to, how to add a service that will... It, be taken advantage of by your, by your congregation as well as by the community. Third question to ask after why and when is, is how. Uh, how are we going to add this service? What are we going to do? I'm going to suggest to you that you start with an experiment. Uh, for example, you may say, if you want to try a Saturday night service, you may say at Easter time, listen, I know we, uh, Sunday is Easter, but we're going to have, have a Saturday night service because we know we're going to have so many guests on Sunday, we can't fit them on the services. And so, will many of you, would you be willing to move to the Saturday night service on Easter weekend or the Christmas Eve Eve service? You know, rather than do it on the December 23rd rather than the 24th, just to see if, if there are people who will actually be willing to move because of vision, because of the mission of the church, and just kind of uh, register in your mind, uh, are, are people willing to take risks? Are they willing to serve those who aren't here yet? And just, just learn from an experiment of doing that. Second, give incentives, but preach sacrifice. Uh, if you're going to add services, first thing I would suggest to you is, if you ha already have uh, one service, I would suggest that you change the time of that service as well as adding the second service. When everyone in the church has to decide because changes are being made, it's a whole lot easier to get people to move when everyone's having to make the decisions rather than just a few. For example, if you have a 9 o'clock and a 10.30 service, you don't want to add a noon service uh, because people won't go to that service. What you want to do is change the times of the 9 o'clock to maybe 8, 8.45 
and uh, you know, and, and 10, 15, and then uh, everyone's changing, and everyone's having to make a decision. Everyone's having to move, and so everyone's willing to make a new decision based on new, new data. Very, very important uh, to to do that. Give them incentives. You may want to move your best teachers to that new service. You, you may want to have other incentives. Uh, if you had a Saturday night service or a, a noon service on Sunday, every once in a while do something special after the service, a, a cookout on the lawn or, or something else to, to get them there. You want to give incentives, um, maybe get some a number, number of your leaders. Ask your small group leaders to go. Uh, by the way, one of the ways you add incentives is this. You actually ask people very clearly to move to that service. You ask them, you talk about how we're trying to reach the community, and you ask them to raise their hand in service. Will you move for three months, six months to that service in order to serve Jesus, in order to reach the community? Because what we found in our church was that the 1030 service was the most popular service for our guests. It was the one we were constantly having to move people off that service onto other services. And we would say it like this. Listen, we know that 1030 service is our most popular service. Most of our guests come to this 1030 service. However, we're running out of room and we don't want to run out of room for our guests. Would you be willing to serve God by moving off this service onto another service to make room for our guests who are trying to come to Christ? Would you be on mission with us and people would always nod their heads and they say okay well would you do it for three months how many of you would just raise your hand right now if you'd be willing to move off the service for the next three months we love you we want to see you here we want to see you at the nine o'clock service or the noon service or the saturday night service or some other service would you raise your hands and they would raise their hands and say okay you can't lie in church and so you're committed to to doing uh, to doing this and we would give that incentive listen you really you, the, the second half is this you want to preach sacrifice People don't move because of convenience. We always have this idea that people will move to the Saturday night service or to the noon service because it's easier to sleep in the morning on Sunday or easier to, you know, to, to you know, finish everything on Saturday. People want to be on mission. They don't want to just be more convenient for themselves. You don't want to create this culture of what's best for me. You want to create the culture of what's best for the kingdom of God and what's best for those who don't know Jesus. And so I encourage you, uh, don't use incentives as the high motivation. It's, it's a piece of it. Use sacrifice. Listen, by doing this, you're serving God. By doing this, you're, you're in ministry. It was real interesting. Uh, one time in our church, we ran out of parking and we had this giant dirt hill beside the church. And uh, we asked people if they would park on the dirt. Now, we, we called it the off-road club. And so people with trucks would, you know, tilt their trucks on top of the hill and things like that. It was hysterical. We gave them little um, antenna balls um, back when there were antennas on cars. We gave them antenna balls. And they, they love parking there, not because they could park their truck or because they got antenna balls. It was because they were on mission. They knew that people were coming to Christ, the best parking uh, spots were left for our guests and they they loved being on mission and being used by God because of that. The, the final thought is this, to, to thank them. Uh, once they moved to that new service, thank them. Tell them what's happening at the service they were at, that many people were coming to Christ or new people are coming in or whatever what is true, whatever is actually happening. Thank them for their service uh, to God and celebrate their sacrifice for moving, moving over. But then you have to ask them because there's now new people in their seats, ask them to stay. They committed for three months, but now that they've committed, you need to say things like, you know, and I knew you said you'd be here for three months. Just so you know, there's no room over there anymore because we're asking them now to move to this service or to move to another service or, or whatever. Ask them, ask them to stay. Uh, people want to be led and they want to be used by God. And by celebrating them moving over, by celebrating their service, they'll, they'll stay there. Uh, these are some ideas on how to add a service. This has been a Converge Whiteboard Leadership Moment. To learn more about Converge or to join us, check out converge.org.